Hello everyone, my name is Haley. Hi, and I'm Kovi. And welcome to the, the Couch, Couch Potato, Potato Lab. Lab. Where we bring the science to your home. Or should I say computer science? Ooh. <laughs> Who <laughs> is right? Make sure to download your lab manual at bit.ly slash couch potato lab. And you can catch us on all our social media. We have TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all at Eyes Youth. And if you're using those platforms, make sure to use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab to find us there. And make sure to text us to text us your questions at 306-570-1013 because we want to hear from you today. We are doing another Tech Tuesday. So if you joined us last Tuesday, we coded a super awesome, what did we code, Kofi? Soccer Scratch. Soccer Scratch. This time we are coding a Pong game. So make sure to join us for today because it will be super duper fun. Well, that's enough about me. Who's the scientist to my right? Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kovi. My pronouns are he, him. And a fun fact about me is that last weekend I went camping with my friends, and now I have a total of 103 mosquito bites on my body. And they are very, very itchy. And one of my friends just told me that I should probably maybe um, have an oatmeal cold bath so I don't scratch all my mosquito bites because they are super, super itchy. And yeah. It's a good time. And my co-host for today is Haley. So my name is Haley. My pronouns are she and her. And a fun fact about me is I spent my morning and I actually spend all week teaching coding. I'm doing a coding camp for eyes, eyes coding camp. And I have some wonderful campers in my group. They're all amazing. But I want to give a special shout out to the Hayes brothers who are in my camp. They are amazing. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. <laughs> Work on your projects. And I can't wait to see what you make for the end of the week. Alrighty. Well, as I said, we are doing a coding episode today, but we want to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 4 territory. So that means that Eyes, as well as the CPL studio here, is sitting on Treaty 4 territory, which is the traditional homeland of the Nahiawak, Nakawe, Nakoda, Lakota, and the Dakota peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Metis Michif Nation. Super important to us that we acknowledge this because we are on shared land and also important for all of you at home to figure out what land you are on today. Where are you watching us from? Text us. Let us know. Super duper great. <laughs> 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 we want to also carry on with what we did last week. We had a Cree word that we acknowledged last week and it is, hmm, let's see if I can pronounce it right. It was... Mamatui Apatsikan. So that was computer. And now this week we have a new word. Yes, and that means keyboard. Yes, so this word means keyboard and it is pronounced, and I might be wrong, Masinataikon? Masinataikon. If you speak Cree out there, please text us to let us know how you would pronounce it. Um, because we're still having some trouble getting a hold of our elder and figuring things out, so we're trying our best here at the Couch Potato Lab. Mm -hmm. And Haley, you have a really cool book um, with all these um, Cree words, correct? And it has like a whole bunch of words that are re... maybe doing... (laughs) incorporating more, making more um, words um, for the 21st century. Yes! So, Cree is actually uh, kind of an old language, and so the people that wrote this book, uh, Neil McLeod and Eric Wolvengray, are actually updating the Cree language right now, and they released this book, it's kind of like a dictionary, with all of these new words, including computer words, because back 100 years ago, computers didn't exist. So languages have to keep evolving or else nobody's going to want to speak them. So people like this who are updating the language are super important so that we can keep the Cree language alive and thriving. Nice. Before we get into our coding um, ping pong game, um, we have to learn a few little things to understand our code a little bit better. So the first thing that we need to learn about is the if-then statement. And this statement is probably the most basic statement um, in coding. And whenever it is true or this statement is true, then an action will be performed through our code. For example, let's say I have a beautiful bike. And if the bike is moving and, and the brakes are being pressed, then what do you think, Haley? What do you think would happen if the bike was moving 
and the brakes were being pressed. Hmm, if the bike is moving and the brakes are being pressed, I would think I would slow down. Yes, then the resulting action would be that um, the bike would slow down. So both the bike has to be moving and the brakes need to be pressed. So those um, conditions have to be true for the action to be performed so that the bike is moving slower. If, for example, um, the bike is not moving, and the brakes are being pressed, then the action won't perform because one of the conditions is not met. It is not true, it is false, so that means it just doesn't finish that then statement. Another one, for example, would be like, if Haley was happy, then she would clap her hands. So she is happy, wow, <laughs> great. Another cool thing is the if then else statement. So for example, if Haley is happy, then she will clap her hands, else, so for example, if she's not happy, else she would throw a tantrum. <laughs> so, <laughs> Haley, are you happy? <laughs> I am very happy to be here, so if I'm happy, I then, will clap my hands. Yeah, so if I'm not happy, let's say I'm, I'm furious at Haley because she's taking the spotlight for this coding episode. So, <laughs> if Kobe's um, happy, then Kobe will clap his hands. Uh, else he will throw a tantrum so I'm not happy so I'm throwing a tantrum oh, oh my god <laughs> that's quite a tantrum <laughs> it looked like you were at a rock concert <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> <laughs> that's how I roll so let's make let's play a little game um, Simon says or Kobe says with Haley in the middle so that we can figure out how this if then statement works Again, uh, how Kobe says works is if Kobe says, um, if Kobe says Haley to do something, then Haley will do that action. But if Kobe says is not said before my command, then that means Haley does not need to do that. Freak. Are you ready, Haley? I am so ready. All right. So Kobe says to put your hands on your head. Nice. If Haley put her hands on her head, then she can continue to the next round. Else, she loses the game. Yeah, so that's Ooh. how like if then else statement works. All right, let's try another one. Um, if oh, Kobe says, um, touch your toes. Good. If Haley touched her toes, then she would continue to the next round. Else, she would be eliminated. <laughs> Good. Last one. Um, Kobe says, actually, Kobe says to do a little dance. Mm. All right. If Haley did a little dance, then she continues to the next round, else she loses the game. And she didn't do it, so she loses the game. Oh, dun, dun, the dun, game. dun. Well, Haley, better luck next time. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, so that's how if-then statements work. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask us. Uh, the next thing that we're going to learn about is the forever loop. And we mentioned about what the forever loop was last week. And this is like an infinite loop. Whatever code is in this loop, it will happen over and over and over and over again. That means there's no end statement or there's no way for the code to exit. So whatever is in it, then it's going to happen indefinitely. For example, if Kaylee had her hand up into the air, then Kobe would give her an air high five. Woo. Good. But if, there's n if that code was not in the forever loop, that would only happen once. If that code was in the forever loop, whenever that happens, so if Kaylee ever put her hand up into the air, then I will forever, always, give her an air high five. So if she did that one more time, BAM! <laughs> yes, so I have to see that for that to happen and then I will execute that code. So those are the two main things that are very, very important and two new things that will be in our code for our coding game today. And it's going to be very exciting. So if you have any questions so far, please text us at the number 306-570-1013. Or of course, you can always reach us through our social media with the eyes handle, um, at eyes youth through like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And if you're going to use any of those platforms, make sure to use that hashtag couch potato lap so we can find your questions. All right, Haley, I'm getting very, very excited because I know you're an expert at making this ping pong game. 
shall we start soon? I think we will. So for those of you at home, make sure that you have a device that you can access the internet on. And it wouldn't hurt if you had another device that you might be able to watch me and watch my screen on. But if not, we'll make it work. We will get it going. So I'm going to transfer over to my screen here. And you should be on Scratch just like me. Perfect. All right, okay, um, Haley, what was that Scratch website that we had to go on, or what, what would you have to type again? You would have to type in scratch.mit.edu. Yes. So that is how you get there, and you would press Create. Or if you went ahead and make, made yourself an account on here, that's super awesome as well. Alrighty, so let's just jump right into it, because I am so excited to make this ping pong game, and I love ping pong. So first things first, we are going to add all of the sprites you will need for your coding game oh my so god what are sprites again Haley? i totally forgot <laughs> oh my goodness don't you worry kobe so sprites are the little characters on your screen they're not just the characters though sometimes they're the inanimate objects so today they might be the ping pong ball and the paddle and some other cool things as well so in order to add our sprites we actually don't need the cat today so i'm going to go ahead and garbage away that cat throw it in the garbage perfect and we're going to add a new sprite. So choose a sprite. We are going to need a ball. So let's search ball. And I'm going to go with this ball right here. So that's one of our sprites. Let's add another one. We are going to find a ping pong paddle. I'm actually going to search paddle. There we go. There's my paddle on the screen and the last one we need is actually a line and this is to indicate when our game is over and you'll see how it's going to be used very soon here and i'm just going to line them up so they are ready so i'm going to put my line on the bottom of the screen so that's the red line on the bottom and my paddle i need to get it ready to move so i'm going to put it below our ball because we want to avoid or the goal of the game is to avoid this yellow ball from touching the red line so now that we have it all lined up, let's get our backdrops as well, because why not? Let's just do it all now. So choose a backdrop, and we are going to find our stars backdrop. So I just search stars. I'm going to select that one. But we need two backdrops today, because you know how sometimes a uh, screen changes if you win or lose the game? That's exactly what we want to happen here. So I'm going to find the neon tunnel. The neon tunnel is our, our kind of main one that's going to happen while we're playing the game. Or that star one is going to come up when we win or lose. Alrighty, so once we've done that, we are going to click the ball sprite and we will start to piece together the code. So click that ball sprite. And the very first thing that we have to do is go in and create a variable. We didn't do this last week, so it's a little new. So on the left-hand side of your screen, where you see motion, looks, and sound, you will go into variables. And we actually need to make our own variable. That's like making our very own block. So we're going to create make a new variable, and we're going to call it score. Because we want to keep score. I'm so competitive. Kovi, are you competitive too? Yes. I know that we're going to make a cool ping pong game later where it's just me against you. And I'm definitely going to get the highest score. Better than yours, Haley. <laughs> yeah, so this part is imperative to our game. So we got score there. Perfecto. Alrighty, so we are on our ball code. Um, once you've done that, we are going to go to the event code. So go into the yellow events category, and we always start with the when the flag is clicked. When the flag is clicked, we are going to go back to our variables. Back to the orangey variables there, and we want to start every game with setting the score at zero. So every time we start the game, it should start at zero. But that says my variables. Let's change it to score. So that should say set score to zero. We don't want to continue the score from last time. We just want to continue, or we just want to start with a new game. Haley, how did you change that variable again? I went to the drop down menu here. So it started off with my variable, mm -hmm. and then it went into score. Uh, I see. Got it. Got it. Perfect. We are good to go. Next, we want to make sure our ball starts at the same size every time. So we're going to head over to our motion area. Just kidding. We are going to looks. And we are going to set size to 100%. 
this just makes it so that our ball starts at the same size so that even if we're playing with the sizes and maybe your little brother or sister comes in and makes your ball a little smaller or bigger it always sets to that same size alrighty the next thing we need to do is go into motion this time and this is so that our ball starts at the same place every time what, colors, what, oh. color, what color blocks are the motion blocks again oh yes they are blue our motion blocks are blue and we are going to find one that has an X and a Y we want to change and Kobe you were actually talking about that last week with X's and Y's weren't you mm, yes so X's are like the horizontal axis, so it moves from left to right. And the Y is the vertical axis, so it moves up and down. So whenever we are setting a specific position for our coordinates or for every sprite, wherever we want it, it's based on the X and Y axes. Thank you very much, Kobe. If we want to head back to my screen, and we'll actually put that into action. So we're going to drag and drop that go to X and Y. Now, these numbers um, don't have to be anything in particular. They can be any number you want. Just know that your ball is going to start there every single time you play this game. So I'm using X at 20 and Y at 150. That's just because those are my favorite numbers. I love them. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it. You pick your own favorite numbers and see where that ball starts. All right. We then need to change the direction of points in. So we are going to, uh, where is it? Point in direction. That's what we need. It is in our motion category, and it is blue. And we're going to point in direction. Now, we don't want the number 90 there. We want to just change that quickly to a 45. And angles, I think we had an angles episode, didn't we, Kobe? Yes, we did. I think we learned about the angles of like with um, Rube Goldberg machines. And angles are very, very important so that it can go a certain way or gravity, for example, will act on an object at an angle so it goes maybe from one end to another. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I loved that episode. That's why I remembered it. <laughs> Thank you, Kobe. We're going to go into our controls, and we need to find a forever loop. We want something to happen forever. We want our ball to be moving forever. So click that orange forever out and put it on the bottom of your code. And we are then going to go into the blue motion area, and we are going to choose the move 10 steps. Move 10 steps. That is so that our ball is constantly moving. But what happens when it moves off the screen? We don't want it to go off the screen. We want it to... Kobe, it sounded like you were going to oh. say what, where I'm going. I think that if the ball ever touched like the edge or something like that, the ball would need to bounce away and back into the screen. You are correct. So we want to find the one that says, if on edge, bounce, and put it right underneath there. So, this is part of our code for our ball here. So, maybe we can try playing it and see what happens. Oh, and our ball is just going and going and going. But it's going nice. through my paddle. Hmm, so that's not exactly what I want. So, let's keep going with our code. We need to go back into our events category which is yellow and bring another when the flag is clicked so even though it looks like we're doing a completely different code we're still coding that ball so keep it on there right beside it we are going to start to piece together a code that makes the ball bounce when it touches the paddle um, so we started with our event code and then we're going to go find a forever loop again we're actually starting with this forever loop it is under the controls it is kind of a, a tangerine color and we'll go ahead and drag it underneath that when flag is clicked when the flag is clicked um we want to use an if then statement Kobe, you mentioned if then statements oh my didn't god you? yes i did all right yeah yeah i did it's fun time if if oh i think the code is that we're we're gonna deal with the paddle this time correct um we're still coding the ball but yeah we are coding for if the ball hits the paddle yeah so if we would need a like if the ball touches like the paddle then something else would happen Exactly. So that's why we went into the control area and picked the if then statement. And I know Kobe was mentioned that if then else before, but today we're just using the if then statement. 
Alrighty, we are also going to need to do something kind of funny. We're going to need to go into the sensing area. We haven't been in here yet. It's that kind of light blue, turquoisey color. And we want to select the touching mouse pointer and drag it into what seems to be that that diamond shape, the <laughs> if diamond then. A hexagon? Oh, is that what a hexagon is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kobe. And we're going to click that drop down menu so you can just press the mouse pointer. And it's not when it touches the mouse pointer. We want it to every time it touches the paddle. Every time our ball touches the paddle. So if the ball touches the paddle, then there are three codes we need in there. First, we have our score for a reason. We want to change the score by one. And we are going to find it. Change score by one. I believe it is in looks. My variables. My variables? Yeah, it we're is. Changing our variable to score. You're very right. Make sure if you're printing off your lab manual, you print it in color. So <laughs> all of these are color coded, and, <laughs> and I'm a little lost. <laughs> so we are going to uh, change score by one. So you'll select the change my variable by one and drag it into the if then statement. But instead of my variable, we want it to be the score. We are always changing that score. We then want the ball to change directions every time it hits the paddle. So we want to go into motion. And that funny one that has those arrows that are curving, you'll select one of those, drag it on underneath the one you just brought in. So both of these are in the if then statement and we're going to change it to 220 degrees 220 degrees if you're wondering why we chose that number text in and maybe sabrina who chose that number will let us know <laughs> <laughs> sabrina sabrina the teenage witch we will see and last but not least we are going to get the move 10 steps because when it hits the paddle, we want it to keep on moving, keep on going everywhere. So that is why we selected that one. We're going to change it from 10 to 15 because I want it to move even faster. Alrighty. So now we have two codes. We have the one that's talking more about the, the score and if on the edge bounce. And then we have our other one, which is the if then statement. We still need three more sections of code. Holy smokes, but we are almost there. These ones are a bit shorter. So, we want to go for the backdrops. We brought in these backdrops and we haven't done anything with them. So, we want to go into our events category. And I know you're so used to grabbing that when flag is clicked, but we're actually going to do when backdrop switches. When backdrop switches. I'm just going to put it underneath and I'll scroll down so everyone can see here. Alright, so when backdrop is clicked. And we want to change it to, and I just press that backdrop one, and we want to change it to stars. So when backdrop switches to the stars, we want our ball to hide. And you might be thinking hide, like hide and go seek, like run away, but really we just mean disappear. It becomes invisible. So that invisibility would be in looks because we can't see it anymore. We can't look at it. So we are going to select hide. So when the backdrop switches to that final, you've won the game, we want our ball to hide. And this will be a similar code that you will use for all of your sprites here today, actually. So we want it to hide. Um, we are then going to go into our events again and go back to that when the flag is clicked. When the flag is clicked, we need two codes under that. And we want it to show because our ball has disappeared, but we want it to come back. So let's go into the looks. And instead of doing hide, which is purple, we want the purple show. Show, which is purple we then want it to switch the background to the one that we are playing on so switch background which is also in the purple which is kind of towards the top um, it is switch backdrop to neon tunnel perfecto so like I said we have four kind of individual pieces of code here and now our final one for the ball is going to be the fifth one and this piece of code um, indicates how the game will end and if we set the red line underneath the paddle, uh, when the paddle misses that ball, the ball will touch the line and we will know to switch the backdrop to say, game over. So let's go into our events. And when the green flag is clicked, we want something to happen forever. So we're going to forever and we're going to control. 
I would drag it out forever and I'm going to put it on the bottom there. And we need to do another if then statement, but we've done this before, so we we know what we're doing. We're dragging that into the forever. So it's kind of like the one mouth is eating another mouth. It's quite <laughs> a lot happening. I like to think of them as like bird beaks. And we want to go back to that sensing. So the ones that are kind of like triangular shaped or as Kobe said hexagon shaped. We are going to bring that out the touching one because when the ball is touching our line. What do we want to happen when it touches our line, Kobe? Do you know? Game over. Game over. So we <laughs> that is right. We're going to switch the backdrop, which is in looks. That is purple. And we're going to switch the backdrop to the stars. Because you have made it to the stars. You are a star. So let's test this out and see what happens. Let's press go. Oh. And it ran through all of the codes all at once. That is great. And they're all hidden. And let's just make sure everything comes back as it should. Oh, and my ball is back. That is wonderful. All righty. So congratulations to yourself. Give yourself a pat on the back. You have coded the ball. It is now time to code the line and code the paddle. So let's start with our line first. Um, just kidding. We are going to start with our paddle first. I'm a big fat liar. I'm really sorry. <laughs> we are going to start with our paddle first. Um, so the code for the paddle tells us to hide when we are on the game over backdrop, otherwise known as the star backdrop. And it also tells the program to show the paddle when the game begins. And also to be controlled by the user's mouse. That's the big one right there. Is I want to be able to drag my mouse across this screen and to play the game, to interact with that ball. I am the paddle. Kobe and I will become the paddle. We are one with the paddle. We are one with the paddle. So let's head on over to events so we can become one with the paddle. And what do we always start with? When the green flag is clicked. Wow, that's like the fifth time in a row. <laughs> I think it is. I think you're very correct. And we want to make sure that it is showing because when that stars um, background comes on our paddle normally disappears so we want to make sure in looks which is purple that we are going to show it so when the green flag is clicked we want to show and then we need another forever loop these forever loops are being used so much today but that's because we want things to happen repetitively imagine if we had no forever loops and we could only have the ball hit the paddle once we only had one shot to get one score that would be no fun we are then going to Go into, I believe it is motion and set X2. Set X2. And it's going to have a number. Mine says negative 22, um, but we actually don't want it to even say a number at all. So we're going to keep scrolling in the motion. Scrolling in the motion of the ocean. Kobe, I asked you this before the show. Mm -hmm. Where is mouse X? Mouse X will be found in sensing, so that very, very light blue. That very light blue. And at the very bottom, there should be a mouse X that's kind of like an oval shaped. You're so right. It will fit within the number category there. So instead of it saying minus 22, we're just going to take that mouse X and drag it right over top. So no more numbers. We're just going to set X to mouse X. So that means wherever my mouse is that is where the paddle is going to go super important that we have that and the last code that we need for our paddle is the when the backdrop switches we want it to disappear so super easy only two codes we'll, we're going to go into the events and we're going to find when backdrop switches when backdrop switches and we want it to be the winning one and we always win in the stars so when backdrop switches to stars we are going to go into our purple looks and go into hide. All right, let's test this out and see if we get any closer here. Oh, I can move my paddle and I can hit the ball. So it's going, it's going, but what happens if I lose? <gasps> dun, 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 dun. But that red line is still there. It looks so ugly. Oh, <laughs> I just want to get rid of it. So now we are going to code our last piece, our very last piece, and then our game is complete. This is super simple. We're going to go into events. When the flag is clicked. Are you surprised that we started with that one? No, you shouldn't be because <laughs> we've been doing it this entire time. When the flag is clicked, then you're going to go into looks, which is purple. 
and you're gonna do show because every time we press that green flag we want to see where that kind of uh, end line or the line that we don't want to hit we want to know what we're avoiding so it's going to show but then when that backdrop switches to stars hmm we've pulled this one out before from events and it is yellow so when backdrop switches to and I'm going to switch it to stars. I don't want it to say backdrop one. I want it to say stars. And I'm going to go into the purple looks category. And I will find hide. So when backdrop switches to the stars, it's going to hide. It's going to disappear. And if this all works correctly, we can play the game. Let's test it out. Oh, and Ooh. we're going. It, the paddle seems to be working. The ball seems to be working. Now let's test out this, this red line here. <gasps> and everything disappears, and I ended with a score of six. Nicely done, Haley. Whew, we coded a whole ping pong game. Nice, but Haley, I have a quick question. Let's say that I don't like to use my mouse to control my paddle, and I don't also don't like the location of the paddle. Um, is there any other ways that I can test it? Maybe like with my keys or something like that? <gasps> there is, and that is actually our tech spotlight of the day, which is the Makey Makey. Yeah, all right, the Makey Makeys are really, really cool. They use a cool circuit board just like this. And this circuit board also has like arrows and a space bar similar to like what a control like what your your like um video gamer controller would look like as well so what i can do is that i can control maybe my paddle with this little controller here but Haley is so so far and i don't think i can reach her so what i can do is actually use these alligator clips to clip on my clipboard on my circuit board and then use it from a distance but the one thing um, this, uh, this Makey Makey uses is the power of energy and circuits. And I'm going to be part of this circuit. And we learned a lot about circuits, so check out our episode Go With The Flow to learn more about what that's like. Now this circuit board, for example, it needs a ground. And since I'm going to be um, part of this circuit, I'm going to include my al gray alligator clip and I'm going to clip it right here. And whatever happens, I must be holding this gray or this metal part of the alligator clip so I, can, I am connected with the circuit. So I am one of the loads. I mean, this circuit board would be one of the loads, and I'm just an extension of that circuit. Now, all circuits always need a power source, right? Haley, like, what would be, what are some examples of power sources that circuits would use? Hmm, what about like a battery? Yes, exactly. A battery or like a renewable sources like solar energy, wind energy, water energy, and all of that. Today, um, my power bank or my power source will be my laptop. And in order to do that, I'm going to connect this wire to my circuit board so that it has energy. And the laptop already has lots of um, power or electricity inside its battery already. So that's very, very convenient for me. The next thing that I'm going to do is use my extensions. So let's say I'm going to use this orange or alligator clip. I'm going to clip it to my arrows. So let me my left one, how you get to clip my red one to the right arrow and all that jazz. And if I flip over, I have this makey makey piano. Whoa, and is that a real piano, Kobe? Yeah, it is real piano. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. So I'm going to make, I'm going to play you a song with this Makey Bakey circuit board, but I'm not going to use the laptop to press the keys. I'm going to use my Makey Makey because in a, it's an extension or like, ooh, or extension or my controller, right? For example, so since I'm part of the circuit, right, so the energy is flowing from the laptop through this red cord, through my circuit, um, my circuit board, my Makey Makey, through this gray wire, through me because Ooh. I am composed of um, ions and like sodium ions and salt that allows electricity to flow through me. And I'm going to complete the circuit by pressing one of these um, alligator clips that I did, that I clipped on. So if I press the orange one, I'm playing a note. If I'm pressing my red one, I'm playing another note. So that's a C, 
and an E. Now I really love the song Hot Cross Buns, and as you can see I need an up arrow to press play the last remaining note. So I'm going to clip on my dark alligator clip. So I'm going to play Hot Cross Buns for you, Haley. Are you ready? Oh wow, this is such a treat! I know, I'm going to serenade you with my Hot Cross Buns <laughs> song. <laughs> Alright, on your marks, get set, go. Oh, just wait. so talented it's 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 oh that's my God. amazing i know but i really wanted to play that coding game um your ping pong game that you created and i think i have a solution for that to but, make it even better but kobe i have so many questions what? if i'm a viewer at home where can i text my questions into oh yes if you have any questions please text us <laughs> your questions at 306-570-1013 if you're going to reach us through our social media you can do that with the handle at eyes youth so facebook twitter and instagram or all of that uh, make sure to use that hashtag couch potato lap so we can find your questions and address them later on and for example we have a question from bella and bella asks um can you cold code multiplayer games on scratch and the answer is yes we can code multiplayer games on scratch for example um i created a game for our ping pong duel so as you can see when Haley coded her game she used uh, the mouse to move her paddle right but you can what you can also do is make another sprite so another paddle and you can actually use the arrows um, to actually move that paddle. So let's take a look at Haley's computer again, and we can see what I'm talking about. Um, because you can actually see, um, use the codes, for example. Here is oh, the code for moving just the mouse, hey? If I take a look at this pink paddle that I made, Yes, so these are the codes to code the pink paddle moving the left and right arrow. So what you can see here is, Haley, what event block do I have right there? That is a when the flag is clicked. Yes, exactly. Next, I have a forever loop, and I have two if-then statements. So if the right arrow key is pressed, then what would happen, Haley? <gasps> then the ball is going to move, or the paddle, sorry, is going to move. 10 steps, very mm -hmm. good. So if I press the key arrow, the left key arrow, then what would happen? The paddle would move to the left. Yes, and I added a negative there. Haley, do you remember what happens if I add a negative there? <gasps> Isn't it something to do with that Cartesian plane? Yes, exactly. So negative x values means that we're moving to the left, oh, yeah. and positive x values means we're moving to the right. And that is very, very important. So that is the code that you can use when you are, maybe if you're not using the mouse and you're not a big fan of moving the mouse, you can use those codes and use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move your paddle. And of course, for um, when Haley's um, ping pong game, you can actually move the green paddle wherever you want. So maybe I wanted to move it a little bit lower. You can do that as well. But I have a cool, cool game right there. So let's play that game. Um, and it's going to be very fun. And I'm going to use this circuit board or this makey makey to play with Haley. So I'm going to be that pink paddle and Haley is going to be that green paddle. And Haley is going to be using the mouse to control her paddle. And I'm going to use this makey makey to control my paddle. Are you ready, Haley? I am. I'm wondering, are we, am I coming to your desk or are you coming I to mine? I shall come to your desk. And we will make sure to keep a distance between us. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to plug in my circuit board into your laptop. Cool. All right, and let's take a look at our game right now. There you go. All right. So as you can see, there are two scores um, on the screen. There is score one and score two. Haley will be score one and I will be score two. So what happens here is that if, if the ball touches the red line, then I get a point. If the ball touches the blue line, then Haley gets a point. 
and that is how our ping pong game is going to work. Haley, are you ready to play this game? I am. I am so ready. All right. So let's take a look back at our screens. Perfect. And I'm the pink. No, I'm the green one. Yeah, and I'm going to be the pink one. All right. So are you ready, Kobe? I am ready, Haley. Maybe we'll play two rounds of this one where they get to see the game on the computer and the second one where they get to see you using the makey makey sounds good so this first one they you just need to see the screen all right three two one ooh, ooh. Ooh. This oh 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 this is no. so hard <laughs> you're stuck on the corner no Kobe. i'm stuck what is happening oh. is it moving no no all right, maybe oh. maybe press the 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 stop the button. stop button. All right, and then press go again. And press go again. We'll we'll try this again where you are seeing our screen because Colby's gonna try and figure out um, why his paddle isn't moving. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, that is awesome! You got it going. Okay, perfect. Oh, it is going forever. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. Okay. First to five. Oh, first to five. First to five. Ooh. Oh no! Oh no! Am I going to win? <laughs> oh no! Oh. <laughs> it resets so fast. <laughs> Haley, you won. Nicely Woo! done. All right. So that was our game with watching the screen. So that answered Bella's question where you were wondering if we, you could do a multiplayer. But let's see Kobe using his makey makey here. All right. All righty. Three, two, one. Oh, oh. Wow, <laughs> Kobe, you're really going. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. That is pretty <laughs> cool. <laughs> and a fun thing about these makey makeys is that... I can actually attach these alligator clips to like anything with sodium in it or and salt pretty much so like bananas and like sour candies and stuff like that if I attach it and touch those bananas it, it's actually going to move for me that is awesome mm -hmm. oh I think let's see what happens here oh oh I think somebody's won here all right Haley yes. you won again holy that was such a good game, Kobe. Thank, thank you thank for you. showing it to me. And what's for that sure. device called again? So this one's called the Makey Makey, and it's actually a circuit board where you can add alligator clips and attach it with like bananas and like gummies or stuff like that to control it. So you can make fun scratch games like Flappy Bird or Mario um, to play that. And you can also maybe use um, that to play a piano with Makey Makey Piano. And it's really, really cool and I highly recommend it. Um, if you come to Ice Camp, we actually may be playing with these Makey Makeys as well. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. Wow, that was great, Kobe. Make sure that if you have any questions, to so text us in at 306-570-1013. And you can catch us on all our socials at Eyes Youth. We have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And TikTok. Did I say TikTok? I love TikTok. TikTok and yeah. make sure to use the hashtag Couch Potato Lab if you're trying to reach us because we want to hear all of your questions. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of games that people make on Scratch. For example, you can see my game if you... Um, search up ping pong duels and you can play around with it and if some something that you don't like is in it for example the maybe the ball is too fast you can actually press a remix button and that allows you to actually make your own game using that already coded game so I could change like maybe the speed later on or maybe I don't like the colors I can change that as well and you can do that for many of the games on scratch and that's why scratch is so great and the scratch community is amazing because we are sharing our knowledge on the Scratch community and seeing like maybe you can learn from other people and how they made their games. And that actually ties in with a question that we have that came in here and it says are there any other online coding platforms? So if you don't happen to prefer Scratch or it's too difficult to use there's actually lots of different websites that you can do the exact same thing on. Maybe you can't make the exact same ping pong duels, but you'll be able to make very similar or or unique uh, projects. So that's things like let's see what HQ told me. There is Ozzo Blockly, Hour of Code, Microbit, Edu. There are so many out there that we would love to show you and for you to discover. 
Mm -hmm. And I know that our code is a really cool website because there are already games um, inside the website and you can actually learn how to code with the uh, programs already in there. So I know there's like a Frozen game and there's like a Minecraft game and all that and they teach you the basics of coding and like what is the if then statement? What is a forever loop? So if you want another explanation, our code is a really good website for that so you can have fun and learn as well. Yes, and if you don't have a younger sibling, or if you have a younger sibling that might not be able to read, they can actually use Hour of Code or even Scratch Junior because it doesn't require any reading. It just uses shapes and symbols. Oh, exactly. Yes. And Scratch Junior, um, that um, app is really cool because you can actually download uh, download it on your like maybe your phone or your uh, your tablets as well, and you it's all touch. Um, touch screen right so you can easily move your blocks um, however you want and it's easier to control if you don't know how to use a mouse or if you're not ready to use a mouse yet mm -hmm. so it's really cool and you can make like cool games and animation as well and we did that for last summer and it's really, really cool to see the kids come up with weird animations <laughs> they do those kids come up with some interesting things and they're also really developing their digital literacy but I want to I've heard that word so much before I just want to learn a bit more about it. Kobe, do you know what it is? Yes, Haley. Um, are, so, Haley, are you digitally literate? Would oh. you consider yourself digitally literate? Well, I have these digits right here, like my fingers. <laughs> and I can read pretty good. So I guess I am pretty digitally literate. <laughs> you're close. So what digitally liter digital literacy means is that your knowledge and about the internet and the digital media and it's very very important to be digitally literate because in today's world technology is everywhere and we have to learn how to use it so we can navigate ourselves through this crazy time hey so for example um what i went to a restaurant um like last week and they had qr codes um on their tables for us to scan and read their menu and we have to be digitally literate to understand what a QR code is follow the instructions find the camera app and all of that like the camera app symbols to recognize and figure out how to view their menus and that's very very important because we need to understand how it works now and another example would be for example hmm digitally literate oh like figuring out how to use an Apple device and a Android device. There are differences, there are similarities, but you have to be digitally literate to understand like what the camera app is, how do I text somebody. There are two different um, technology devices, but we have to be digitally literate to understand how each of them works. And if we can transfer our knowledge from one device to another. And it's also very, very important to stay safe and to know our role when we are digitally literate. For example, it's not very good if we share our personal information like our full name or like our address on social media or maybe taking a picture of our boarding pass and posting on social media because it has a whole bunch of information, personal information about us. And whatever we post on the internet, it's there forever. It's very, very hard to delete. So you have to be very, very careful on what you post online because we wouldn't want our future bosses seeing weird pictures or maybe things that we don't want them to see or maybe our grandma. We don't want our grandma to see like <laughs> <laughs> our, 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 a rabbit with buck teeth or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, Colby, I just got a new credit card. Can I post a picture of that online? The full picture, number, my first and last name, everything. Can I post that online? No, Haley, that would be a bad idea because then people can use that information and pay for their rabbits with buck teeth <laughs> online and you don't want other people to use it, your money to buy weird stuff online <laughs> <laughs> so you can't make sure we don't do that so it's very important to be digitally literate and to be safe and know when to post things online so that we are safe and you're keeping everyone else safe as well that is what it means to be digitally literate hey. oh so i guess I would be digitally literate as long as I don't post that credit card photo. Yes, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think, thank you for that explanation, but I think we're on to our favorite segment of the show. Ask our scientists. <laughs> oh. 
Alrighty, so like you saw, it is time for Ask Our Scientists. And we had a question come in from the Hayes Brothers. And the Hayes Brothers, shout out to you. When or where is the game over? So they're talking about the code that we were doing earlier. And I will actually bring it up on my screen and maybe we can discuss it a little bit. So if you just want to see my screen here, <laughs> we will be able to see where it is game over now we we don't have anything that says game over but basically when it has these stars here that means game over something i can do if i really want to be super fancy and i'm in the wrong thing i want to code my background so i press my backdrops there and i'm going into backdrops in the top left corner something that i can maybe do is i can add some text on there now let's see if if i can put the words game over so that everybody is so clear that this game is over. I'm going to turn it red because that's a very good color. Now I'm going to put it right in the middle of my screen so that I know it says game over. So feel free to do that if you want. just makes it a little more obvious that that game is over. So let's switch back. And it's right there. So that was a great question, Hayes Brothers. So yes, the stars is the game over. Mm -hmm. And if you take a look at your ball code, I know that um, if the line is touched or something like that, um, the code is then stop all. And that's pretty much the game over code as well because it's, oh. oh. Oh, wait, wait, JK. I'm getting ahead of myself. Disregard. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Coding is quite um, complicated quite mm -hmm. complicated it is oh i got another question um that was amazing is Haley a master coder oh is that a question for me <laughs> yeah are you a master, <laughs> a master coder, coder. <laughs> well i would say at a grade school level so that grades one to eight i might be considered a master coder but using block coding is not the most practical as it's quite restricting those blocks need to be there already for you so that's why we have coding languages like uh, javascript or uh, C, C++, plus plus, um, HTML, some other ones there. And that's what you can learn when you're a little bit older. And that's actually kind of like learning a whole new language. So I don't know that, but I sure can block code. Mm -hmm. Oh, Haley, um, and you're not in computer science or like in that field at all, correct? I'm not. I'm actually in English. And when I'm learning English, I'm really not learning many computer languages. Oh, but you can code this really, really cool ping pong game so that can show that everyone and anyone can code if they put their mind to it. Mm -hmm. I suppose you're right. Well, thank you, Kobe, for that wonderful question or whoever sent that in. <laughs> All right. Um, our second question is, my coding says that there is, is a syntax error. What does that mean? Uh, so syntax is like a set of rules for the coding language. It is similar to the grammar rules in the English language. So whenever you have a syntax error, that means there's something wrong with um, whatever you coded. And you just have to fix maybe there's a spelling error or you missed a letter or something like that. So whenever there's a syntax error, you just have to look through your codes again to make sure that it's all correct and you're using the right language and words. Yeah. Hmm. That was a very complicated question, but that was a good one. Um, we have another one here, and it is, what is a while loop? So a while loop is basically uh, that the loop will keep going, like that forever loop will keep going as long as it is recognizing that something is happening. So that forever loop, for example, from earlier with our high fives, if me and Kobe are high fiving each other, um, as long as I have my hand up, that loop is going to go. It is a while, a while loop. So as long as my hand is up, it is going to go. As soon as my hand is down, the loop stops, and it is not going. So that is what a while loop is. Mm -hmm. And I think we have some more questions coming in. Kobe, yes. do you have another one? Yes. So number four, is there going to be another coding episode? Yes. Um, our very, very last Tech Tuesday episode is next week. So next Tuesday, and we're going to make a game called Matching Mania. Yeah, it's going to be really, really fun. I think yes. we have one last question, Haley. One last question. All righty. What is your favorite? favorite coding activity you've ever done like ever ever oh man i <laughs> kobe, is, <laughs> kobe you have so many favorite activities i'm sure do you have any yes um i coded lots of um games so far and one of them that you were just listening to was a starving shark game <laughs> 
So pretty much what happens is that I'm actually moving my micro bit. It's a little circuit board, kind of like my makey makey. And I'm going to pretty much eat the hungry, I'm, not, I'm the hungry shark and I'm eating all the little fish. And then I have to avoid the puffer fish. And that is my favorite game that I coded. And you can actually participate as well. All you have to do is sign up for our last week of ice camp, which is next week. And we learned a little bit more of how to use Scratch and Microbit and how to code that. We can pretty much use a Microbit as a controller to move the shark so we can eat all the fishes and get a high score. That's yeah. great. I think my favorite coding activity is probably from last year's camp where we made musical instruments using Scratch and using that makey makey that Cody w Covey was showing. I think that's the third time I've called you Cody today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, <laughs> are we friends still? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so because I had such fun with you on today's episode. Yes, today was a blast. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. Next week we'll be coming to you with another coding um, activity, level three coding. So it's uh, gonna be a little bit harder, hey, Haley? It will be and I'm actually still working out the kinks for that one trying to figure out uh, how to get it perfect for all of you at home. So I'm so excited to see you there, and I think we are ready to sign off for the day. What do you say? Yep. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for our supporters like Actua and um, um, the University of Regina, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Oh, tomorrow's episode and for next Tech Tuesday next week. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.